Okay, so uh, this is what we're headed towards, uh, looking at objects like beams, looking, looking at things and trying to solve for some unknowns, trying to figure out all the forces acting right here. Uh, and so if this beam is in equilibrium, if it's not moving left and right, then the sum of the forces in the x will be equal to zero. If it's not moving up and down, then the sum of the forces in the y direction will be equal to zero. And also, now that we know moments, now that we've solved for moments, and all these forces are not acting through one point, uh, now we can sum the moments, and if this is not rotating, which it won't in statics, if it is in static equilibrium, it's not rotating, so then the sum of the moments is equal to zero. So this is where we're going, we have three, for, for two-dimensional problems, we have three equations. Some of the forces in x equals zero, some of the forces in y equals zero, and some of the moments is equal to zero. Uh, but we just need to figure out what, what is happening at A and B, let's say. A is this rocker, B is a pin. So we need to think about what is happening at this rocker. What, what type of force should I draw on my free body diagram right here at A? What type of force should I draw on my free body diagram right here at B? Well, you need to think about, so let's write this down. Let's think about how the, let's call it the support, you know, this pin, this rocker, this roller. Think about how the support is restricting movement and or restricting rotation and wherever it is restricting movement there is a force there's a reaction reaction force there if it is restricting rotation there is a reaction moment that we will need to draw there that we would include in our free body diagram I don't know if you can see what this is, but there's there's it's pinned right here, but this is kind of on a rocker, we would call it, that is just sitting on the ground. It's not restricting it left and right. It's not restricting it from going up, but it is restricting it from going down. So if it is restricting it, then there is a reaction force in the opposite direction. There is a force right here fa and it is perpendicular right there because it's a rocker if it is a pin this is pinned right here this is pinned right here a pin does restrict it left and right so there's an a force b in the x right here the pin also restricts it up and down so there's a force b in the y right there now uh the those might be opposite you know I, I think it's pointed to the right it might be pointed to the left I think it's pointed up it might be pointed down if I was wrong then my answer would come out negative but anyway we need to look at all the different types you'll see on the next page all the different types of supports and what reaction we need to draw there what forces or moments we need to draw at those reactions so let's look at this next page we've got 10 different things that we're gonna see 10 different supports and reactions here, I flipped it um, the correct direction. So first, let's talk about a cable or a rope. A cable or a rope. When we see a cable or a rope, what will we draw there? Well, a, a rope is in tension. Ropes can only pull. So we would draw a force right here in the, in the direction of the rope, right? We would just draw a force in the direction of the rope. Ropes are always pulling, so this is pulling on my beam. All right, and why? Why is this restricting? Is is this rope restricting me from moving left or right? No. Is it restricting me from going here? No. The only thing it is restricting, it, I can't go any further out, and so it is pulling me in, right? Or it could be pulling me in. So either think, you know, ropes are always in tension, restricting it along the direction of the rope. Um, or think to yourself, well, the only thing it is restricting is this movement away, so I've got a force towards. All right, how about this link, this weightless link right here? What should I draw right here on that link? Well, how is it restricting? Uh, 
you can see that this link could kind of rotate. It's not restricting it from going that way, but it is, it can't go any further out. And also the difference from the rope is that it can't go any further in. All right, it can't go any further out. It can't go any further in. So uh, if it is wanting to go out, it's going to have a force in right here at this theta. Uh, but if it's wanting to go in, it might have a force in this direction. It might be in that direction. So that, that's the difference between a cable and a link is that a link could be in compression or tension. So how do we know which one? Well, we don't really know. We just guess, all right? So I would guess it is in tension. I know it's at that direction. I'm going to guess it's in tension. Um, if my answer comes out negative, then it was the opposite direction right here. Here in this class, negatives just mean the opposite direction. Negatives just mean a wrong direction. All right? So anyway, weightless link is along the line of action of the link. A weightless link has a force along the line of action of the link. It might be in tension like I drew it, but it might be in compression. Um, and I would know that if my answer comes out negative for that force F. All right, how about a roller? A roller. So let me draw this beam right here. How is a roller restricting its movement? It's free to slide up the incline. It's free to slide down the incline. It could come off the incline, but it is not. It can. It's restricting movement into the incline. So I've got a force out of the incline, right? It's restricting movement into the incline. So I've got a force out of the incline. In what direction is that force? Well, this incline is theta from horizontal, it is perpendicular to the incline. It's a normal force. You know normal means perpendicular. It is perpendicular to the incline. So this force, perpendicular to incline. So what does that mean? That means that this incline was at 30 degrees from horizontal. This would be 30 degrees from vertical. We could draw some, some triangles and some angles here and say, theta, and then it's complementary angle, and then theta, and then it's complementary angle to, to find that. I just switch, and, and I've talked about this in the, the notes before, I just switch horizontal with vertical, right? Just switch horizontal with vertical. Okay, uh, for things that are perpendicular, switch horizontal with vertical. Here, how, how about a rocker? A rocker is the same as a roller. It could slide up and down, it could come off, but it cannot go down into so I've got a force perpendicular to the incline. So if this incline was at 10 degrees from horizontal, this is 10 degrees from vertical. All right, so a rocker and a roller are the same and also the same as number five. Just two things that are touching. Just a smooth, smooth, so there's n nothing keeping it from going up and down the incline. All right. It could come off the incline if it wanted to, but it cannot go dig down deep into the incline. So I would draw a force perpendicular to the incline. What if this incline was at a 4, 3, 5? Then this force would be at a 3, 4, 5, right? Perpendicular to the surface, perpendicular to the incline. See how those three things are, are the, the same similar. So when we see a rocker, when we see a roller, we don't draw the rocker, we don't draw the roller, we just draw a perpendicular force, perpendicular to the incline, and we call it F. You know, we call it some unknown force. That's probably what we're going to want to solve for. All right, let's go to number six. What if we have something that is in a slot? What if we have something that is in a slot what should we draw? What forces are acting at that reaction? Well, there's nothing to keep it from going, you know, in, uh, I mean, up and down as long as it stays inside that slot. But there is something keeping it from going this, you know, in that direction, perpendicular to the slot. So I'm going to draw a force perpendicular to the slot. Now, it, it could be 
if if my beam wants to go down and to the left, then I would have a force like I drew it right there up and to the right. If my beam wants to go up and to the right, then I might have a force down and to the left. Which one do I should I draw? Um, either one, you just guess. And if your answer is negative, you chose the wrong direction. So in this case, if my answer is negative, I chose the wrong direction. Uh, so could be negative, right? Answer could be negative, and if it's negative, it just means, oh, it wasn't that way. It was that direction. Uh, same thing with that weightless link. This weightless link could be negative. So instead of pointed down, it maybe it was pointed up. Uh, number one could not be negative, right? Because a rope can only pull in tension, right? Three, four, five could not be negative because a negative would mean that it is uh, almost keeping it on the incline, you know, sticking to the incline. Uh, so, so these three, four, five could not be negative, but two and six could be negative. We'll talk about some others. How about this one? This is a member pin connected to the collar on a smooth rod. Uh, so we've got a member right here. There's a pin right here. So I don't know if you can tell, but that means that this member is free to kind of rotate here. It's free to kind of rotate there about that pin. Um, it's on a smooth rod. This is free. This collar is free to slide up and down, but this is 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 identical to the to number six, the um, slot. It's almost like a slot. It, it's restricting it from going in, in those directions perpendicular to the slot. So same thing. It we have a force perpendicular to the slot or perpendicular to the rod. So if this rod was at theta from horizontal, this is at theta from vertical. This slot was at theta from horizontal, this is theta from vertical. All right, this one, our answer could be negative. Right, because um, I, I think it's, it's going this way, but it could be restricting it the other direction. Okay, number eight, probably the most important one. Number eight is probably the most important one. It is a pin. It is a pin. Imagine that you have a pin going straight through that member. So what is it restricting? It is not restricting the rotation. This, this member could rotate left, right. So it's not restricting the, the rotation, but it is restricting the movement. It can't move left or right. It can't move up or down. So let's draw an FX. Let's draw an FY because it's restricting it left and right. So I drew an FX. It's restricting it up and down. So I drew an FY. These could definitely be negative. Could be negative, right? If I drew it to the right, it could be pointed to the left. If, if I drew it up, it could be pointed down. Um, negative just means I drew it the wrong direction. Negative just means, hey, I guessed the wrong direction. right? Negative just means I guessed the wrong direction to begin with. So I should go back and draw it the correct direction if I solve and that force Fx comes out to be negative. Okay, look at number nine. Number nine is a fixed connected member to a collar on a smooth rod. Compare it to number seven. Seven, there was a pin. I kind of drew on top of it. Seven, there was a pin right here. Here, there's no pin. This is like a T. This is like a T. So can you imagine that this cannot rotate, right? This cannot swivel right there as opposed to the pin at number seven. It could rotate. This could not rotate, so there is a moment there. This cannot rotate, so there is a moment there, a reaction moment that is restricting the rotation. Okay? Uh, it's free to go up and down, but again, it's restricted this way or that way. Only draw one of them. So if this is my member right here, I would draw one force perpendicular to the rod and then a moment, and then a moment, a reaction moment, all right? Uh, that moment can be positive or negative. 
because it's restricting it clockwise and counterclockwise. That force could be up or it could be negative, meaning it, it, it's, it's really, I guess, the wrong direction. It's actually down. All right. So a fixed connected collar has a force and a moment. A pin connected collar only has a force. All right, and then how about a fixed support? Something that is just planted into the wall, right? Planted into the ground. I mean, it is fixed, right? This is not moving up or down. This is not moving left or right. So I'll draw the F. Y, the F, X, those could come out negative. It also, this is not allowed to freely rotate, is it? You know, this can't just rotate, it can't pivot. Uh, so there is a moment as well that could also be negative. So there we go. Uh, you can kind of memorize those. Um, but... If you can't remember, or if you don't know how to handle it, just ask yourself, how is that support restricting the movement? If it's restricting the movement, there's a force. If it's restricting the rotation, you know, if, if it can't pivot, then there is a moment right there. All right, so now we can use this to draw a good free body diagram and then we're going to use our equilibrium equations. Some of the forces in x equals 0, some of the forces in y equals 0, some of the moments equals 0. Three equations we could solve for three unknowns, right? We could solve for three unknowns um, for, for these problems, whatever it, it's asking to, for us to find.